Only thing I'm plugging is Forgotten Seasons. Welcome back. Today we got a three-time champion, Division Three to Three Pete. Man, this guy has an incredible perspective. Jelani, I'm going to let you introduce our guest. You guys had a, a drink of water together in the league in 2002 with the Lakers. You're still tight today. So who do we have the pleasure of speaking with today? We have no other than Devin, Mr. <laughs> Green Hazel Lies, George, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a back-to-back to back champion, as Devin said, out of a Division three school, three championships, uh, one of the best guys probably in the history of NBA. I can't, I don't know too many people that have a problem with Devin George, and if you do, that says a lot about you and what you got going on at the end of the day. So, yeah, my brother, no one other than Mr. Devin George. Damn, that was good, Lonnie. That was good. Yeah, that, was that was solid, good. man. That was solid. You got me over caffeinated and warmed up a little bit, man. I care. Oh, right I care. <laughs> Not that I don't for all the other guests, but you know, this is my dog, y'all. This is personal. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So kicking it off, Jelani and I were talking, and I think like I mentioned at the top, but you're from a Division three school in Minnesota, and you don't just go to the league, which is completely rare for a Division three player. You go to the Los Angeles Lakers mm -hmm. with Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, Phil Jackson, man. My first question is like your expectations and imagination when you found out you were getting drafted by the Lakers, when you actually arrived there. Did it just completely exceed any thought? What would take us back to those like first steps off the plane when you landed in Los Angeles and then those first memories? Because, I mean, the 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 experience in the transition, I, I don't know if you can find two bigger extremes in the basketball world than Division Three in Minnesota and the Los Angeles Lakers in 1999. So the best you can paint that picture for us of your first days with the Tell Lakers. Tell the truth, Dev. It's forgotten seasons. This is a safe place. <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> Honestly, like the, the first days, man when i got there it, it was it was different you know i'm from minnesota man it's cold 77 below zero 30 below zero winter um i get off it's a lot of people um it was it was it was a culture shock for me man it, it was really different i had to get used to it um i was friendly i would speak to people but you know in la man you don't know somebody and you like Hey, what you speaking to me for? I'm like, hey, I'm you looking at me in my face, so I'm just gonna say what's up. Like people are like, do I know you? No, you don't know me. So it was it was it was different, but the weather, the holidays, everything was different. I'm I'm not I wasn't used to 75, 80 degree weather on on Thanksgiving and Christmas. There's no snow, so it, it was it, it was different, but um I, I enjoyed it. Dev, how did you have to learn around Minnesota is not Los Angeles. So there's inside the practice facility and there's the Staples Center and then there's moving around Los Angeles during the time in Los Angeles as a, you know, early in your early 20s. How did you learn how to move around the city of Los Angeles? Was there any veterans? Did you have brothers? It, was it just your own self-awareness? Because there's a lot of dynamics. You played there a long time. There's a, dyna there's a lot of dynamics on how you move around the city. How did you pick up on that your first couple your when you first got to LA? Well, first of all, first, I, I'm a visual learner. Like I can go somewhere one time and remember. Got lost a lot. The LA highways, you know, in Minnesota, if we miss our exit, we just get off at the next one, turn back around, and go hit it. LA, you miss your exit, you got to get off. You got to go through streets. You got to come up the street, then you got to go down, then just to get back to go the other way. Mm -hmm. So that was a that was an adjustment. But really, the vets. Me and Ty Lu, I, I stayed with him every we we ate breakfast, lunch, dinner, after school, went to the mall, went to the beach, went mm -hmm. every day. We didn't leave each other's side. He was there a year before me. So that was really who I leaned on in, in the vets. Um and they, Lusky you know, was out in them us. streets. Lusky was out in them oh. streets. He knew exactly <laughs> where to go, where, what time to go, how many people you needed to bring to get in. Lusky was tied in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> What so, was what's, what's Ty, what's Ty Lue's, uh hometown? Uh, something, Missouri? Mexico, Mexico, Mexico City, Missouri. Mexico, yeah. Mexico City, yeah. Missouri. I always love that. Uh, so setting the scene like for the Lakers when you get there, um, this is when Phil Jackson gets there. So like three weeks before you get drafted, he signs with the Lakers. Uh, the season before you was kind of like a, a tumultuous year. They went through three coaches. Uh, mm -hmm. Dennis Rodman was there for two weeks. But when you get there is when the three-peat begins. Uh, Jelani was saying before this that you were one of the guys that Phil really liked. And I know that that wasn't uh, probably the case for everybody. Phil was a very particular.
particular person. Uh, he had his ways. What was your first interaction with Phil? Did he give you a book? What you know? What, what was what was that first first meeting or practice like with Phil? And and what did you think of him when you first met him? Well, really, Phil was the one that worked me out. So like mm-hmm. right when he got there, like I was the draft pick. So he worked me out, and. I was really there to be a crash test dummy. I think they wanted to draft another kid. Um, I ended up having a good workout at the first, my first thought when my agent told me, Hey, let's go work out with the Lakers. I'm like, why are they having me come here? Because I'm thinking they got Cole, they had Eddie Jones, they had Rick Fox, all the same player that I was, you know, like I ain't gonna ever see the court. And those guys were in their prime all stars. So I was like, why are they coming, having me work out? Well, feel like different players. You know, he he likes different skill set, different players. So I worked out at a really good workout. And after the workout, he told me, you know, he's like, hey, that was a lucky workout you had. I'm like, luck. I was like, mm-hmm. um, I said, I said, I'll go shoot some more. If you want me to go shoot, we can do we can do more drills. I was in shape. I was ready to go. He was like, no, no, you want to end on on, on luck. I'm like, luck. I'm like, what are you talking about? So he's messing with me. He just walks off. He was new, and I'm looking at the guys that are working me out like, are we done? And they were like, I don't know. Like, he just walked out. So two weeks go by, and my agent calls me again, and he's like, the Lakers want you to come back again. I was like, for what, man? You know, they got these guys there. So I go work back out again, and then at that time, Phil was like, you know what? You got lucky last time. Now do that bleep again. I think I did better the second workout. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then – Draft day comes, I'm going to skip past the Lakers. I'm like, they not drafting me. They got all these guys. And that was the that was the one pick that I wasn't holding my breath. Every other pick, I was like holding it like, ah, not me. Not yet. Yeah. And then the Lakers, I was like, oh, no, they ain't going. I, I def- They definitely not drafting me. And then I was – You went to go get some it. chips. The Lakers pick came. You went to go get some chips. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, oh, yeah. they drafted me. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. So yeah, so that that's that was my first that was my first contact with Phil, and then we actually had the triangle right in summer league. So I actually had the triangle on the offense before everybody else. Then really in in training camp, he was harder on me because he's like, "You had this before anybody else in the summer. You need to be knowing this, you know." So they was they were getting on me really, Ricky Hayes and me. But but that was my first interaction with Phil. Is is when he, he worked me out. But it don't take too long as a player if you're in a workout with Devin George. It don't take too long. Like if you're working out with other threes in his position, and let's say we're going through a workout, it don't take too long to figure out Devin can take it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. whatever the little game you're playing, you know what I mean? Even even if he would answer innocently, it's almost because where he was from in Minnesota, like he could answer innocently. Like, like I don't want to no disrespect, but it's almost his first inner child answer. It's so pure. It's like if that's the game where you can play, we could do it again. Like if it's a challenge, you know, Dev, yeah. Dev was always been like that. We're running it back. It if we was on the sticks yeah. and you felt like you beat him, you like, damn, that's some bullshit. You got lucky. He'd be like, we can run it back. I ain't got nowhere to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that <laughs> that to me, we was just talking about this, Dylan. That's why I said he was one of PJ's favorites, is because he was impervious to those little games. And when it was time for it, like if you called his bluff, he would be like, okay, run it now. In church shoes, Devin mm-hmm. would have did that workout in church shoes, church socks, shorts. You know what I mean? Whatever, whatever it was that PJ was trying to put in front of him, like he was just it, it was no problem. So that's as a, as a player, if I'm with him, if we're working out and I'm a three, like you start to learn. Oh, OK, they're probably going to go with him because you can see, you know, if you say something and your face wrinkles up and you looking around and, you know, and it's too mm-hmm. demonstrative, he puts you in another pile. If it's he see you working off the left side of the brain, you know what I mean? Now he's <laughs> now he's interested. Look, mm-hmm. I tell you what, my first probably four or five years, probably fifth year, I think, coach kind of came in and broke it down to me what he has been doing. So from the moment I got there from a rookie year, first year, he was on me. George, George mm-hmm. yelling, yelling, this mm-hmm. man, film room, talking about me. You did this wrong, film session. Every time, it's always me, nobody else. Second year, same thing. I'm like, I'm a vet now. He's going to leave me alone. Nope. Third year, same thing. Same on me, on there. me. Yep. Fourth year, all we, all we, all me. He finally sat me down. We get to New York. We, you know, we drop and roll. We trying to get out and go eat and do whatever we do. And he's like, hey, I need you to come up to my room. I'm like, come on, coach. We in New York, man. I, 
I'm trying to get out and go. Let's go. No, nah, I need you to come up to the room. I'll be real quick. Brings me up to I go up to his room. And then he um he says, uh he, he says, You think I pick on you? And at the same time, I talked to my dad, and my dad was real big. He would watch every game. He'd be like, You shut your mouth, you sit on that bench, you wait till you call, you get in the game, you'd be happy, he'd give you two minutes. I want you smiling. My dad, every game he would call me. He's like, I ain't see your white teeth. In I, I said, I need you to smile a little bit more. He he was just on me, on me, on me. So he was like, don't say nothing stupid to the media. Step back and relax. You don't have no problem. I saw them checks they're giving you. Shut your mouth. So <laughs> I was thinking I had my dad in the back of my mind. I was like, nah, coach, you don't pick on me. Coach started laughing. He was like, no, you can be honest. And then I was like, you know what? Forget it. Yeah, man. What what I do to you, man? What did I do, man? What like why are you always on me? I'm like, be sure everybody every day all be making mistakes. Why you always call mine out? Why we always gotta watch my segment of the film when I'm in the game? Why don't we do anybody else? So he basically just said, Hey, I know you can take it. I saw how you take it. Hey, I'm actually talking to other people. I ain't talking to you. I said, I know everybody else is making them same mistakes. He says, but I know you can take it. And he says, I know, but I'm really speaking to the other guys that I really can't say mm-hmm. that to. So I'm using you. He says, ask Horace. You know Horace. I had to do this with Horace Grant See? in Chicago. He was See? my guy. So See? I was he like, got the that. I was like, oh, okay. He got the real <laughs> he got the real Zen master. He got the before which is when PJ was height Zen master shit before he got a little <laughs> older and got into his ways. You know what I mean? He was still mm-hmm. really doing that Zen master shit. You know what I mean? And he oh, was yeah. receptive. I wasn't receptive. Like my first two whoa, years in the league was whoa, with G, was whoa. with GP and Vin Baker and in and, and the corner in the Northwest. Like you don't want to know what my vetting situation. When I got there, I, t- I was told I told Dylan Deb when I got there because I wasn't playing and I was fighting tooth and nail for every last minute to get off that injury reserve. I had a hair trigger. I had in the practice when Cole was messing with me. When you know what I mean, whoever it was, when it was somebody that was in my same position. Yeah, I could. You would literally, Devin yeah. would sit, literally see it happen. No, 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 no. I told you. <laughs> you tell I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you, I told you. Here, Lonnie, Lonnie, Lonnie. Let me holler at you real quick. Let me holler. Come over yeah, here. Come over here. Did you see something last yeah, night? Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me let me holler at you. Did you watch Martin last night? You know what I mean. And I'd be yeah. like, what? And then I'd be like, yeah, I saw it. That shit was funny. And then we would go by, and it would go up and down because we'd be on the second team. And I'd look at him. I'd be like, you did it again. You know what I mean? But he would be saving me because he knew how to take it. And that's what I'm saying. I was one of the players who would be making them faces. Like, what the fuck is PJ talking about? You know what I mean? Yada, yada, yada. Or I feel like I was just busting y'all ass in Seattle for three years. Now I'm coming over here in this suit. Like, don't get it twisted. So he saved me. The the one in New York yeah. had to happen. The one in New York had to happen. I don't know if you remember that one. We was in New York. Yeah. Yeah. The Let's one in New York had Let's to happen. Let's hear it. <laughs> I Let's hear been, it. I, I've been doing well, not playing, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Getting used to the whole deal. We go to New York. Um, I lost it in the middle. We had a practice. I lost it. I abandoned the triangle. I was like trying to give Slava and, and, and Mad Dog and everybody in front of me any type of work. It was low key Kobe ish. Like I was doing all the stuff I wasn't supposed to. I was just trying to show every skill set that that I had that, that they didn't think I got because I was in a suit. And every time I scored, I'd be like, it ain't me. And then everybody's like, oh, shit. Like, what's what, what's mm-hmm. on? I remember Rich Mitchman. I remember doing something and I kept looking and I was like, it ain't me. That's what I kept saying. Y'all got it <laughs> twisted. It ain't me. And I kept looking yeah. down and then Mitch was finally, I think Mitch and Deb there's like, hey, 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 we coming to the point now where that's why your ass is in street clothes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to make it all make sense. But you know what I mean? I'm a, I was, I wanted to play. They was playing for chips. I felt it's like I tough, could play. Man. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. It's tough sitting there, especially knowing like when it's not always about basketball. Like it's when guys good. aren't playing, it's about a trade. It's about this guy makes money. It's about this guy, you know, is going to be disruptive if he don't mm-hmm. get numbers or minutes. It's it's about it's a lot of stuff that goes on. It's just not like, hey, we're just going to put the best five out there or we're just no. going to put who's playing mm-hmm. West not. It, it's not like that, and it's frustrating for us. We, we we were young players, fairly young players, you know, early on. So so that game, 
we ain't seen it too much. You know, you get to year 10, 11, you like, okay, I know what it is. This is how it is. I'm probably not going to play tonight. And you're cool with it. But we try, we're going after contracts and we're trying to get, you know, we're trying to get the next contract. We're young. It means everything to us. Everything. You know, some guys are okay with it. Who cares if you're getting a paycheck? No, nah, it, it still does mean something to us. And, um, you know, the guys, we, we would all try to save each other. And we can see it come in the boiling point, and that's when I was always la 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 la. Come on, come on, come on, come on. When he bought the boil, like, oh no, no, let's yeah. not do it that way. You know, yeah. it's gonna make it worse. It so, you know, so, so, shouts out to pops for having the insight to tell you yeah, that. Yeah, facts. I didn't have that. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Man. You know, I was trained. I'm TTG. I was trained to go. Like, you know, go in there and get yeah. your spot. You look like you're Bush. And, and <laughs> that's why they got you over there in a the suit. Cause you ain't, you know what I mean? Everything I was was like, yeah, yeah, I need to fight and claw for it. But that's why you probably had a lot of that success, Devin, because you had pops like, yeah, hey, you sit, you sit right there and you, and you, you deal with it. You getting paid. You winning. You playing for the Lakers. Like, you're going to be all right. Yeah, I don't know how you handle that, that as a as a twenty two year old without that. How you handle Phil Jackson in the mind games without somebody calling my dad after every game? Sick. Hey man, you see that? You know, you see it? Yeah, man, I only got ten minutes tonight. Yeah, man, that's okay. Then some games, he I, so I'll have like ten straight games just balling in a rhythm. Come to game eleven, I just know I'm in the rotation. I'm know I'm getting as a young player. Sit there the whole game. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Next game, sit through the whole game. Talk to my dad, and will help me through it. And he's like, "You go into work tomorrow. You get there early. You talk to your coaches. You shut your mouth." And um, third game come around, sit down again. I call my dad again, man. I'm getting frustrated. I'm about to say something, man. I'm about to say something. And my dad got on me so bad. He told me mm. to sit my ass on that bench mm. until Jesus called my name. And then he said, <laughs> "Don't say nothing." <laughs> he says. And hung up on me. Click. Facts. Then I talked to him. I said, why you hang up on me? He said, you don't have no problem. He said, are they late? I said, late on what? He's like, Pain. are they late with your checks? I said, no, it's a direct deposit. He said, well, you ain't got no problem. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Hung up on me again. Mm-hmm. But you know, old school, mm-hmm. they, they don't. Mm-hmm. They say, you getting paid how much to play? Mm-hmm. Man, shut your mouth. Mm-hmm. Sit down. Wait till he <laughs> call you and get in the game. Mm-hmm. And then when he do call Shit. you to get in the game, I don't care if it's two minutes I want you to smile and act like it's the best two minutes of your life. Def, stop me if I'm wrong. You would go from that situation, from not playing in three games, four games, whatever it is, then he would put you in the fourth quarter with two minutes left and draw up a play for you to hit you in your, yep. in, in the Devin George spot, right? Yep. That, am I, am I wrong? Am I, am I wrong in it? That's, that's what, you, that's what, that's what you was working with. That's what that's the type yeah. of games he was playing. Okay, you got ten straight. He you almost you like yeah. I'm starting. I should be starting. Like yeah. I got it figured out. Yeah, yeah. He'll go cold yeah. on you five or six games, and you be sitting there yeah. five or six games, lunching out. Oh yeah, I remember her from last trip or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And then he'd be like, Devin. And you look up. It's two minutes left in the fourth quarter. We down two. Whatever he want to call. Yeah blind pig or he wanted to shoot out a triangle yeah. call so Devin can get it yeah. in his shot where he was killing not the previous see, that was 16 games ago because he was just now he's going yeah. off of what he's seen in the first 10 when he was killing and then just thinking like after this sixth game where he was sit he's still going to be that same dude 16 games ago so that's what you was dealing with with PJ man and you have to be a that's tough exactly dude exactly what he was yep Shout out to Pops again. Uh, so <laughs> I, I think it's like uh, – so if you go from 1999 when this three-peat started to 2006, um, you're the only player that's by Kobe's side for that whole run. So you see kind of all the different stages of the glory, uh, the friction, and then the eventual mm-hmm. dismantling. And you spoke about it before, and we've kind of made a rule. Like I don't want to really – just talk about the Shaq and Kobe beef because you've said it before. Like, I think the media had a, had a field day with that. Uh, Jelani and I were talking about it, even like the thing that happened with Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid in the Super Bowl. Like you see kind of two all time greats, butt heads and they win and it's fine. But then as soon as they, they stop winning, then the media has a field day with it. Um, I say all that to say, going back to 2000, when I think the 2000 finals is probably when Kobe, you, you see the first extended, like, okay, this dude is, you know, could be one of the best players in the league. 
What was that energy like with Kobe? Because people have talked about it before from Jalen Rose on the Pacers, um, how his own teammates kind of uh, didn't not like him, but he had all this swagger and confidence as a 21 year old taking the big shots in the finals. Like what was the dynamic early on your rookie year with Kobe and the rest of the team? Cause you mentioned the vets up top, like Brian Shaw, AC green, John Sally. Like these are like dudes from the eighties when it's a whole different league. And then this young dude is, is coming in here with his swagger and confidence on a hundred. Like what was the dynamic like early on with Kobe and the rest of the team? It, it was, it was tough. You know what I mean? Cause he had a vision. He had a place he was trying to go. And it seemed like it was pulling teeth because they were trying to contain him and say, hey, go at this pace, go at this rate. And he's like, no, nah, I'm going it. We can get it now. I'm ready. I'm here. You know, and they're like, no, 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 no. Don't don't forget about us. But what really and then the I had a very close relationship, even when Kobe wasn't really speaking to the team, he was still mm-hmm. reaching out mm-hmm. to me and he was still calling me, making sure you're good. You, are you good? You work on your game. Make sure you do this. Make sure you get on here. You better you better have this done when we see each other, yada yada. And then when my contract was up after my third year, he was in there fighting for my contract. He called me every day. Did they get the numbers right? Nope, not yet. Okay, I'll be in there tomorrow working out. Did they get the numbers right? Nope. They're getting close. All right, I'll be in there tomorrow. And then he, so he was pushing for me to get me my re-signed contract, which he helped me do. So that's the relationship we had, but that was really and then so knowing that when I was getting, so I was a young rookie. And then my second year, I was always the youngest on the team. Him and I were the youngest early on. He had stripes. I didn't. He had all, you know, he was, he was getting re-signed, promised. I was just a young snotty nose rookie. So they would, I had to do all the rookie duties year after year, the bags. I had, you know, do all the, I had to get haze from all the guys. And I would be looking for him like, hey man, you got stripes. Man, they'll hey, if you tell them back off, they'll back off. And he just look at me like, just do it. I'm like, come on, man, speak up for me. But it was uh so that that was the relationship. But I think it was just he was ready to go. And they was like, nah, young fella, you know what I mean? We've been here doing this, to go at this rate, go at this pace. And he's like, nah, we're gonna go this fast. That's how I, I asked Jelani, I asked Jelani this too, uh, one of our first episodes. You hear so much about like the transformation to the black mamba. Did his mindset actually change at all, or did his abilities just kind of match up with who he thought uh, of uh, he was? No, his 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 IQ and his his brain just got more. But his his mentality, he's always had that competitive, fiery, you know, mentality. Um, extremely talent, God given talent, talented. But he just got smarter and smarter, and he started understanding. He started playing, really, the old cliche, he was playing chess while everybody else was playing checkers. He knew how you were going to try to guard me. He knew what plays you were going to try to run against him. He knew what plays he could run against you. He knew how to manipulate the defense. He knew how to, to, to get through double teams and how to shoot over them. He just, he was a step ahead of everybody else. He knew on a nightly basis depending on the matchup who he need who he needed better for that night or that road trip right so he would come to De- he would come to Devin on the, when we go to Texas and do the Texas trio or whatever whatever we called that and he was like look he going to come here i'm going to need you here that's a 3 you know what I mean? When 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 he kick here, why don't we do the two pass? He'll tell you in and out in in the triangle setting. And then he would tell you how to react when he would break the triangle and where you would be at and where he would look for you. I promise you, if you would listen to the man and get to the spot, it would sound random as hell. He would so it'd be so, so specific. You'd be like, yeah, whatever. But if you would get to that spot, the ball would be dead there. On. You'd be dead, dead on, on, and you just had to work on that shot. You know, yeah. and, and and that's that that's part of being on a championship team. Now you know, it's it's sometimes it stunts your development a little bit, but now you know. Now Devin knows. Okay, but it would change. Okay, Devin Devin knows now. In the week before the long road trip, he's working in them spots. You know, in the yeah. triangle, mm-hmm. you know, they, they there's the garden spot. There's the pinch post. There's the two yeah. spot. <laughs> there's you know what I mean. You you know where he he'll tell you where you're gonna get. The, we're gonna two pass to the top. When I'm, when I'm, I'm gonna deny this, yeah. and then the shot gonna come right here. And now he knows the sequences that happen, and now he can just go work out with that after practice. 
you know what I mean, before we leave and get ready, and then he'd be on that road trip, and he'd just be hitting Dev. Get, uh, Dev would stop runs. He was good out of timeouts. He was good uh, late games because he knew where he was going to be. He knew where those shots was. He worked on it. Just constant professional. I'm going to keep giving you your flowers because, you know, Appreciate this is what brother. we do on, for, for, on Forgotten yeah. Seasons. But I had a first – I'm just saying, like, I had a first glance to what success looks like in the NBA when you're not a five-star. I was a McDonald's All-American. I was all this in college. I hold records. You know what I mean? So, you know, if you don't have the right tutelage, you can hold that against yourself. It can stunt your development. You know, I'm making the, the faces. By the time, if I'd have played with Dev, with a teammate like Dev in my first three years, like we talked about this, Dylan, either a coach, a friend on yep. the team, a, a coach that believes on you, it could totally change how your career goes, totally change how they mm -hmm. talk about you. You know what I mean? How your triggers, you know what I mean? The whole thing. And he had an opportunity to have some great veterans underneath the championship environment. You know what I mean? That he was willing enough, he was healthy enough to accept the blessing. You know what? You said something too, how you said how you started your career. You know what I mean? It was just, it was a lot going on. Mm -hmm. But, and then I went back when we were at the, um, at Kobe statue, um, his revealing and, when I was, it just hit me listening to Phil Jackson talk about the progression, how he worked with Cole, how he was trying to get him here. And hey, some of the things that he said that I heard him personally myself, don't start taking the game over yet. It's not time yet. You know, saving certain things, you know, some of those things. And I said, well, you know, we had great coach and we had Jim Clemens, Come on Kurt now. Rambis. Yes, that's my dog. I had, as, a, as a young player, I had great perfectionist coach, Tex That's Winner, Phil Jackson. Yeah. I was, they were teaching me and grooming me, so I de developed no bad habits. Like from day one, mm -hmm. they, they had the mentality: we do things the right way. This what's way, the this homies? Way, this what's way. the what's the what's the strength trainers that was rolling with Grover stuff? Is it which one? Uh, Kata, Jim Kata, or yeah, with, remember uh, the staff? He they came with him from Chicago, right? Remember he requested, yeah. Ka uh, oh, oh, uh, no, Chip, 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 Chip came with him from Chicago. That's MJ's guy, right? Yeah, that's uh, MJ's guy. Well, no, he was he, he was, was a, he was their Gary of, Vitti. He was their Gary Vitti in Chicago. So our Gary even Vitti the, was our trainer. Yeah, and then and they had like it? a uh, the strength and conditioning Chip coach Schaefer came from Chicago. They would mm -hmm. they, they learned all the Grover, all them Bulls teams that woo -woo, mm -hmm. that was the strength mm -hmm. and conditioning staff that was with him in Los Angeles. That's what he was on. It was a holistic environment. You know what I mean? You had to be built a certain way. You know what I mean? You lifted weights. Like you like, like you had to they was not the fake track in the NBA where you check, nah, you better come in nah. here and get this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for real. It, it was it, and, and it was a whole it was everything we were doing tai chi we was doing yoga we was doing all kinds of stuff meditation um in the room it, it, it was it was the whole the whole kit and caboodle uh we haven't talked about Shaq at all yet is it true that he bought you a car uh a mercedes is he, is the story about the buick and the valet is that is that false or did he, yeah, did, nah, did he, nah. did he really, did he, did he really give the valet driver a Mercedes to bring up to you when you thought your old Buick was coming around? No, this is what happened. So, mm -hmm. um, so Shaq was like Santa Claus. So for rookies, we don't get paid until like November. You know what I mean? We don't, we don't get paid till November 15th, but we there all summer. <laughs> we got two months of the season, so we don't get paid until then. So, he takes care of the young guys. We get on the plane. He just hits you in the face with a wad of ten thousand dollar bills. Oh yeah, <laughs> man! Or he'll have you do go do something. He had me go buy headphones. One of the crazy things he always had me go buy headphones. Give me like three thousand dollars. You know, headphones like three hundred dollars. Go buy them. All right, I'll go to Best Buy, buy them. Next, next, the very next city. Hey, I need some more headphones. Man, what you do with the headphones? I'm like, this is what happens when you got too much money. Most people take the headphones <laughs> off, wrap them up, and put it in their bag. He just take them, he just leave them on his the plane. His are disposable. He's at. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he treat them like disposable. You got disposable <laughs> Bose headphones, for big fella? Yeah, Damn. man. So we start, you know, start going to pick up after him. Like, here you go. He left these headphones again. He's going to be having me try to go get them so you'll hold them. So, yeah, so big fella. 
So what happened was, um, I think I was just wearing the the free cars out, like the dealership. You know, if you come in and for a Laker and you sign for an hour or so, smart move. Hang out, smart they move. give you a few Toyota or whatever. So I was just rolling that or whatever. Yeah. And then you know he kind of got wind of it, and he was like, "Oh, you know," he he was like, "Oh, hell no!" Nah. He said, "Man, what you driving?" I said, "Man, this is free car, man. Hey, I just had to sign for an hour, man. They gave me a free car for a month." He's like, "Oh, hell no!" Nah. I said, "Man, what you doing?" <laughs> and then. He said, I said, um, I went, I told him I went into downtown LA Motors and I said, I said, man, it was, uh, man, it was back order. So I had an excuse. I was giving him an excuse because I did go in. It was back order like eight months for this Benz. Was it a 500? Yeah, yeah. It was was back order. It was like brand new. Cool. So I I go in there. Nope. Four door. Four door. Yep. And black. I remember this car, definitely. I remember this. Car. Yeah. Go ahead, my yep, yep. And so I so I go in and then uh he said, What? He's I said, Yes, yeah, back order. So I gotta continue to roll these, you know, the little free joints I got. You know, Toyota, my man, Dave, you know, he was hey, plugging me in. Hey, five thousand miles go on the car, bring it in, get a new one. I was like, Cool, I'm good. <laughs> so uh he was like, Man, nah, hell no. Nah. He get on the phone, he call, he said, Is it true? He said, my man was in there, yada yada. He's like, Oh no. Man, he had one the next day. They must have stole somebody, whoever had a tag on it. I had one the next day. He was like, go get it. I was like, oh, man. But what he did do, he he um, he also uh, my f- first Rolex. We were in Milwaukee. Mm. And, uh, and uh, he had his watch guy come. And then he was like, he's like, you like any of these? I was like, ooh, yes, sir, that one. <laughs> And then the dude told me the price. I was like, oh, I don't like that. that is, it's ugly. He's like, man, like stop much. playing. Stop mm-hmm. playing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, nah, nah, I ain't playing. He's like, man, stop being so cheap, man. It's like, hey, what you? I was like, man, I got looked at my little per diem. I was like, man, I got a little mm-hmm. two per diem Smart move. for you, man. Smart move. Yeah, I got like, a couple Come bands. on, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at my per diem little envelope. You know, envelope we get. I'm like, hey, yep. man, all right, how about the per diem? He's like, man, give him what you want to give him. And then he, I'll pay the rest. So he got me that. That's dope. Santa Shack. Mm-hmm. Ma money, man. Always. Oh, yeah, always. That's dope. So I want to ask you a, a little series of quick hitting questions about the three P, right? So you, the 2000, 2001, 2002 championship. Think about those three years. And I'm going to ask you some questions. You got to pick one player or team in that. So the first question uh, with that three P, which player uh, that you guys faced? I know the Lakers, you know, you're not scared of anybody, but was there one player in that run that instilled a little bit of fear in the team or or you? I would say in each one, so like each year? Like no, Indiana. no, no, just the, 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 the three combined. So well, out of those three years, out of those three championship runs, was there one player that you, you felt like instilled the most fear in the I team? I can't think of a name. I would yeah, say... Okay. Let me see. I would say in the finals or in those playoffs, because the playoffs just we, in we those had, three playoffs, just in, oh, playoffs, just in those playoffs three years, or fives. Uh, Mike Bibby gave us problems. One uh, yep, that was my number one. That was my number one. Yep, he gave us problems. Like he he gave us he gave us problems. Man, he was. Um, he had to make video assets about Bibby. Like he would could do them collages yeah. with the movies about the matchup. With Bibby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he would did. try to make it personal. He makes some content with, with, with some of these matchups. Whoever got the content, that was the problem. Whoever he did, it was either a team or if he put a person and he started splicing the movies. That that it that's was about them. That, yeah. That's who yeah. we need to focus. Like if he had a focus, like he would have like like if if he wanted he wants to cut the head of the snake off. So mm-hmm. Bibby was like one of the ones, Bibby and Weber, but really it was it was Bibby that was really getting stuff going. They were pick and roll and he was hitting. It was too much. So it was kind of geared around him. So we watched some of his clips, then we'd go into a movie. You know what I mean? Because I think I don't know what his strategy was. Maybe because we got Shaq back here with that that can't pay attention for more than five minutes. <laughs> so he got to splice a little movie into it with the game film. So we're watching game film, watching plays of the other team, and then all of a sudden, boom, it'll go to a movie. And then we got like three minutes, four or five minutes. We watching the whole movie. Then it's back to the film. Then it's back to the movie. Back to film. So. I would say Bibby was one year. Um, I would say that second. Well, Tim Duncan was always an issue. Mm. He was always mm. an issue. Always. And, it, and, it, and we had a philosophy, man. We was really like, 
forget him, man. He's he going to get 35, 40. Forget it. We're going to really sit on everybody else. Like everybody else got. To. We we cannot let them got Bruce Bowen and Ginobili. We cannot let them guys get going. We really got to put them down. Um, because Tim, I mean, it was really, you know, we had one side, we wouldn't double. Second side, we make sure we double. We follow them on the double, on the out. Um, but it, He's I, a I would say killer. those were two guys. Yeah, yeah, he he just he was just man. It was yeah. That was really always tough. something. It's Tim always something really, with this guy, man. You, <laughs> he's one of those really tough, man. Yeah, yeah man. He it was just, and it, it wasn't just like just scoring. Like he was blocking shots and twenty rebounds, uh, oppor- and opportunist blocks, thirty five like points. The, the block in the fourth quarter where it saved the lead. Yeah, and it's like when he when he gets the blocks and when he chose to get a twenty rebound night. It was weird. It's like, dude, what's come on with this yeah, Tim Duncan? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it does. It it almost doesn't make sense because you look at. I mean, he's probably uh, you know everybody would agree he's you know top ten, top fifteen player ever. And I feel like with all of his peers in that group, you can point to like one thing in their game that they just did like abnormally well mm-hmm. athleticism shooting whatever but with Duncan it was all it just seemed like Basketball. untraditional and it, it like it, it it almost didn't make sense but every I mean he 20 and 10 for 20 years yeah. with the same face he was yeah nothing just no no movement just sit there just looking around killing so I, I would say those are my two playoff guys that we really like home you know being on like sidebar you know what Tim Duncan's talking shit was he would give you a compliment. <laughs> like if you hit him, he'd be like, he wouldn't say nothing, but then you hit him with something right when you like, yeah, that's how it's going to be tonight. You would almost <laughs> like score, you know, in bigs. Once we score in the middle, like, yeah, and I'm coming right back up in here, and that's how it's going to be all night. His off thing was, good move, Jelani. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why he would irate Ticket. That's why him and Ticket would get into it so much, right? Because Ticket <laughs> oh, coming yeah, in. Yeah, they yeah, would. Yeah, and, oh, and, oh, oh, yeah, and, yeah. he, and then he's like. Yeah, that, that's a good move, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it was. Right, it, could, uh, continue, c- continuing down the line with the questions. For you, toughest wing matchup in that in that three-peat. Oh, in the three-peat. Uh Let's see here. Who do we play? I would say um, you got Sacramento, you got Phoenix, Portland, Indiana, San Antonio, I would say, Philly. I would say all of them. I would say Sacramento, Hito, and Peja was tough. That I was really studying my film. Bonzi and Pippen was tough. Like Pippen was just made you go crazy because he knew what we were running. He knew the lanes to get in. His arms reached across the court, you know what I mean? So that was tough. Um, finals, you know, Kenya Martin was just mm. too extremely wiry. Um, and Richard Jefferson. That, so it, it was it was a lot of th- those. Those were usually my matchups that I was really honed in on looking at my DVD watching like, ooh, OK, mm. I got to bring it tomorrow. So the the Kings in 2002 and the Blazers in 2000 are like two of the teams that people describe as like best teams never to win a championship. Was what in your eyes was one of them better than the other? The 2000 Blazers or the 2002 Kings? That's a good question, man. Oh, that is a great question. I would say, who do you who do I think is the best out of those two? Man, they were really. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a tough question. Um, I would say the similar, Kings, but not the same. Yeah, they yeah they 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 had different threats. Like like the Kings really had like that ball movement, backdoor cuts, and shooting, where like you couldn't pack it in because like they all could shoot, so you had to get out there. But then you get out, and then they start running their elbow and pistol plays and start backdooring. They have big men that can pass. Vladi and Weber could pass. Mm-hmm. So what did he call tough. it? A like bastardization it was, of the triangle. For real, he did. <laughs> for real. That's what he, could, that's what he used the to say. Lasers. They were just like deep dogs. Good one on one player, yeah. just physical scoring, 
she Wallace and Jermaine O'Neal, and then they had an old Sabonis that was putting in work, and they had Scotty Pippen and Bonzi. I think they had an old Steve Crafty Smith. Like they were just that could just. I mean, every last one of them, like like it could just get downhill on you and give you thirty. Every single one of them players. So it was different. It was more like the Blazers. Every single one, you just take turn and get a bucket. The Kings, they're going to move it around, boop, boop, backdoor you, or boop, boop, you look up, three-point. So it was a little bit different. Mm. So uh, moving on, Jelani and I were talking, and I was explaining to him how I thought that there were like kind of different phases of this Lakers team. And, you know, you have the three-peat, and then some friction starts. And he stopped me and said that, no, no, no. Uh, he thought that 2000 and 2001 were kind of the glory years, and then 2002 – I don't know, Jelani, I'll, I'll kick it to you. From your perspective, because you were there in 2002, um, some people just call it fatigue, like championship fatigue. I mean, you're going, playing into June, July every single year. But Jelani, from your perspective, like when did that, when did the pendulum kind of shift from like honeymoon glory, everyone loves each other to like the other side? After the back-to-back, that's the threshold. You know, after the back-to-back, when you're competing against these guys and I see Dev and the layup line or you, you, you're discussing, you know, there's a there's a level of communication that the fans and the coaches that don't know that happened between the players and the layup lines and during the pre games where we check in on each other, what's going on at camp, how the season is going. It's very short and it's almost Bluetooth of energy. Some of this shit is nonverbal where we look at, hey, what's up? How y'all doing? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's just a thing that, you know, happens with us. We can't talk right here, right now, but we'll talk at dinner. There's a whole, you know what I mean, thing that goes on. And to me, from what I saw, like, you know, the three-peat is a mofo, bro. Back-to-back, just winning it as the Lakers is a mofo. You know, you're talking about you coming back with Shaq and Kobe. Now, Kobe's peaking to me from the outside. And when I got there, like, the honeymoon was over after the first two. The third is when you got, like, a push baby. Like now we had like a kid that we wasn't expecting to have. And he, you know, we're not used to having somebody in the house and now he running around and all the other people are out the house. If I equate it to a marriage, Devin was there the whole time, but it's not that it was nasty. It's just dudes been together from September to June. Mm-hmm. Every mm-hmm. day, getting year everybody's year. best yes. year mm-hmm. after year, playing games with PJ. Dudes want contracts. Dudes want more playing time. Some dudes getting older. Dudes want, you know, now it's my turn. Now we see this, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So to me, from the outside, and when I got there, the honeymoon was over. And the third was like, you know what I mean? Okay, now is the real part of the marriage where we really find out if we really love each other. You know what I mean? Now we done both put on a little weight. We're not the fine tenders we used to be when we first got married. You know what I mean? We got extra bills. Yeah, we made a little bit more money, but now we're spending a little bit more. So we got extra bills. So if I equate it to a, a real world situation of a marriage, that's what my experience was. Not that it was bad. It was just, mm-hmm. you know, a whole deal. This is a this is the three peat. I'll let Devin speak to him. You know, he was there the whole time. But competing against the team, that's what I saw. The third, you know, and then being there that third year and coming into the environment. To me, it was more like, yeah, of course. Of course everybody's beefing, getting on each other's nerves a little bit. This is all they've been doing for the last three years. It's tough. It's tough, man. It, 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 you're, I mean, you're right on point. It, it, it's tough to continue to have that year after year, that fire, win championships. And we even noticed it amongst ourselves in the celebration. The first celebration, everybody's going crazy. Ah, champagne. Second. Ah, third, third, everybody's kind of high-fiving and just pouring, you know, it just kind of, it, it, it's, it's natural. And then, um, so that's kind of, you know, we kind of went downhill and then guys get tired, man. We, that's a long season, breakfast, lunch, dinner on the road, breakfast, lunch, dinner, come home, breakfast, lunch, we're on the planes in practice, in film. We're with each other every day, getting on each other's nerves, just like anybody else. Um, so yeah, so he, he's right on point. It, it, it's hard to keep that up, win a championship, win a championship, keep it going, keep it going. Um, but yeah, he's he's on point with that. And we know we stop under the at, belly at. 
We know everybody where everybody's soft under the belly at. We all like little brothers and big brothers. So we know when to mm-hmm. poke, where to poke. Mm-hmm. We know the little the, the right jokes to make. You know what I mean? We yep. know when to say nothing. It's just like everybody, there's no, there's not a lot of transparency, bro. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Off the court, on the court, so that people know how to get your goat, I guess. Uh, how do you look at the Warriors right now? I mean, they stuck together way longer than that Lakers core did, but do you see them reaching the top of the mountain or or once it once it fades, is it kind of too far gone? Um, I think one I think it's fading because of age. I think they're just they're just not as youthful as they used to be. If they were young, I'd be like they'd be back. But I think it's just the age is catching up. The game is getting younger and these young guys are coming. Like there's just young teams that are just popping up. Minnesota's starting to do something. Oklahoma's starting to do something. The Kings right here down the street, you know, they they even tested them last year and and had to have Steph mm-hmm. pull out a heroic um, veteran fifty point fifty piecer to get over that. I bet if they probably meet again, they probably the Kings will probably you know beat them pretty bad. You know, now that they have the experience mm-hmm. because they were the younger team, they were the younger them. They were up and down. Like the, King, the Warriors can't get up and down like King can anymore. So, Mm-mm. you know, that's Mm-mm. what I see about the Warriors. You know, that was my last year playing there. I played with Steph his rookie year, and that was my last year that's right. uh, playing. So, um, but I, I see them kind of needing to retool and get younger. I think they're doing good by playing the young kid, uh, Kaminga. Kaminga. I think that's they. I mean, whoo! I mean, he. You got to hope he, they, you got you got he, you got. You gotta, you gotta you gotta hope that he turns into the twenty, let, 20, see, 20, hey, I'm, 20 and ten if, guy. Yeah, yep. yeah. If, if if I'm if I'm them, I'm I'm gonna put some money down, put some chips down, and just say, hey, go go do it. Let him go through the fire. Let him go up and down. Let him see what he's doing. So, I think that could be that could help because mm. he's whew, man. Which is actually like so their just, culture, letting young people flourish and living with mistakes. Mm-hmm. That's how they got to the Warriors thing. So if Draymond, we, yeah, remember yeah. Dr- Draymond and uh, da- replacing David Lee as they got there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So just wrapping up here, a couple more things before we go. Uh, 2004. I think that's the year uh, Rick Fox gets hurt, and and you you play big minutes and start pretty much every single game that playoffs. Uh, that 2004 team, obviously, you lose to the Pistons, and that's the end of it. Uh, if Carl Malone doesn't get hurt, do you think that you beat the Pistons? I think mm. we do. Carl mm-hmm. and, and Horace was hurting, so mm-hmm. and, and, and Rashid was just he was he was too Rashid. much seven foot shot man, and Rashid was <laughs> he, you know he he's a baller. So yeah, I think I think we could have at least balanced some of that out. And then really Carl had us working with that triangle because that was in his natural position. Once we figured out mm-hmm. how he can just get it and cut and go, he he was making them passes. We was cutting, getting shot. So I think it, it, the difference, it would have been different. Takes time. Even though you know the triangle, I was telling Dylan, even though you know the triangle and you've seen it on video, when you actually put your physical body in it, there's an amount of hesitation that happens that it, it messes with you. It makes you look like you don't know how to hoop for a minute. It does. And, mm-hmm. and the hesitation throws everybody off. Like you got to be able to, yep. it's got to be second nature. Boom, boom. I pass. Who? Yep. And, and there's, there's no play call. Like if it's a play call, he might say he'll have a sequence of actions. Hey, do it this way, this way. Somebody might jump in that plane. I might have to throw it there. Well, now we got to do that other sequence. Of action, and everybody has to know this is where we're going. Nope. Somebody, I can't make that pass there. I got to have my releases mm-hmm. and so, and so forth. So how hard is it being uh, like a, a role player? in a system with Shaq and Kobe. Mm. I was reading something from Brian Shaw where I think it was from 2003 where Shaq and Kobe were, were really hard on guys like uh, you and uh, Medvedenko mm. to the media, like publicly. I can't imagine what it was like behind closed doors, but I think Brian Shaw said something like, you know, you guys are shooting 60 out of the 80 shots, so it can't all be us. How hard is it being, uh, you know, a role player, so to speak, besides Shaq and Kobe? Mm-hmm. Um and it, we spoke at the beginning of this, you know, how how hard headed you have to be to deal with guys like Phil. But what's that? What's what's that perspective like? It's uh, it's hard because we may get four temps. That's hard. You got to make you got two or three of them temps. You know, you're not getting no rhythm. I may get a, cut, a shot first quarter, none second quarter. I may get two shots third quarter, and maybe another two four. 
you got to make them count. So it's hard. It's easy to say, OK, if I get 10, 12 shots to get my rhythm, if I'm going, you know, two for 12, then that's something different. But we were going one for four, oh, for three like that. ain't you know, that's tough to get them when you get them to make them count. And people only see the box Dev, scores. Yo, know? Dev, how much pressure on it? When Kobe presses you the ball out of a double team, if you don't make that shot, bro, you are not getting the ball again. Yeah. That's playing for the Lakers. That's playing with Kobe and Shaq. Like if he tell you to be in that spot and he remember they say he used to shoot in between the doubles and triples, bro, if you pass out of one of those and don't shoot one of them crazy shots and you don't make them shots, you might not see it again for another month. You know, Shaq hits you with a good pass and you blow something and take away one of his little assists. He loved to get assist out the triangle. You yeah. know what I mean? You blow one for him. He might not give it to you for another month. You know what I mean? That's the thing about playing. <laughs> another football. month, he a said. A month, bro. A month. He said a month. They ain't giving it to you in <laughs> practice no more. They definitely ain't giving yeah. it to you in the game. It might happen on accident. They might refresh their mind. But, like, if he pass out one of them doubles and triples or Dev don't hit the three-pointer that he want Dev to make. It's the one that he need him to make to stop better, a run or just it. to you, you better make it. Yeah, you might, you might, you might not smell it for a month. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so then, just wrapping up. Obviously, Shaq leaves after two thousand four. He gets traded, and then you're there in 05 and 06. Um Was there ever? I mean, it's just you're the only one there that was there for the three peat. Also, like mm -hmm. the best you can, like. You know, was the, Phil's gone too? Like with, with Kobe and just that general like vibe of those 05 and 06 teams when it seems like Kobe against the world, he's coming fresh off the case. Uh, he's, you know, fighting with his family. Like, w was the energy still decent or good? Or were did that shift into kind of a, a dark zone in that 05, 06 time period just for like the organization as a whole? The organization, it was a different organization. It was definitely starting over it was definitely a rebuilding it was it was there was nothing that i recognized that year we were losing the culture um guys showing up late young guys arguing it was just it, it was it was no structure it was just it was just chaotic and that was just something i'd never recognized because we were all so disciplined but we were all so structured it was a pecking order. Young guy, older guys talk. Young guys, we kind of spoke. Hold on, we all kind of knew our roles. We all knew lines across. It was just everything. Guys fighting, coming, mm -hmm. coming to the locker room. Guys arguing, coming to argue. You know, it was just, it was a mess. It was a mess. Guys not passing the ball to each other. Just no structure, no nothing. So, um, so yeah, it, it, it was tough. At the same time, Dev, there's a lot of stuff that happened in-house that would have never got outside. Like today, something happens now at practice or on a bus or woo-woo-to-woo. You know, that's outside in 30 in thirty seconds to a minute. Like we, we, There's a lot of incidents that, that we ate, that the veterans, and because of the structure, there was like, there ain't no talking. Yeah, that happened. But, you know, a couple of things have got out, you know what I mean, because people decided to share their stories. And that's when people can – decide to share from from their pov but for the most part nothing really gets that we got out of there you know what I mean? nope. aside from the big kobe shack yeah. alleged thing nope. that was it all the and there was all was kind of other it. shit going on trust me yeah. within the yeah. fifth and seventh player and the eighth and the twelfth and over to yeah. the fourth you know it was always something going on but you never heard about it and the, and that's because you when you're doing championship stuff and playing at that level that's obviously part of the agreement you know the 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 Hall of Fame players kept Kobe and Shaq. That's another story. We can't, you know, that's the part of the NBA machine. But what really happened for the most part in-house, aside of a couple stories that got out, was pretty much, you know, everybody kept close to their chest. Hey, Amen. Uh, last question. So the statue just went up 81. You were there. Uh, one of our producers, Lucas, shared a, a Players' Tribune article that uh, – that you uh, you wrote, and I think uh, I know there's going to be a lot of uh, three statues. I think, uh, and people were wondering, like, you know, what is it going to be? Uh, what is that 81 point Kobe? Who who is that dude to you? And and what was it like being at that statue unveiling? Um, I was proud being there. You know, being a part of that history. 
Um, and then really that game that, you know, the statue, that's when he came out, you know, that, that was the, that was the signal when he came out and, and when the crowd was going crazy. Um, but witnessing that didn't realize he had that many points because it was like a battle. We were going back and forth. It was up and down. We were, I think we might've been losing like by 20, the whole game, you know, and then we had to make a comeback. So it, it wasn't like, we were up winning and, it, you know, it was it was a battle. We need to steal. We need to start pressing. We need to try to get back in the game. So it was like you look up in the third quarter, he, he had like 54 or something like that. He got 54 points. So we never even really realized it. But um, I think from all of that, I was just proud to be a part of it. Just proud to be a fly on the wall, mm. you know, just from seeing like, man, I was a part of this history. I was a part of these coaches. I played with these players. Just proud looking back on things. Mm. Mm. Well, man, we appreciate your time. Um, this was amazing. Uh, great perspective. Also know you're doing some pretty uh, phenomenal mm-hmm. things outside of basketball uh, in Minneapolis, yeah. trying to pour back into the community that you grew up in, a lot of real <laughs> estate development. So just kudos to you. This was great. Um, we really appreciate your time, man. Yeah, well, no, one last thing. You. Devin, you mentioned being proud uh, of uh, being you know, around the league and being a chip. You know what? The league and, and former players, we were all we were all proud to be around you and the professional that you were coming out of a, 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 a Division three school, winning three yeah. championships. You know, obviously doing well for yourself financially because of you know how you set yourself up when you came in the career. But like I said, I don't know one person. You can't get everybody in the league. We don't all vibe together. We're not all the, we're not all the same. Newsflash. Uh, but you know what I mean? For the like-minded people and, you know, uh, 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 I don't know, we're all good, but we call it, you know, just, just from the people that, you know, were in the league that, you know, respected people who who were never handed anything. And some of us who were handed, handed things and didn't, you know, didn't equate to a career like yours, bro. I just want to give, you know, I like to tell former players this when we sit down at home and, you know, sometimes and we think about these things and we don't really accomplishments are the accomplishments. But what you've managed to do with your basketball accomplishments is equal those as a good man working in your community. We all you know what I mean? We're all not perfect. Yeah, we all got our hang ups. But in the real scheme of things, it's important for us to know that when we hang it up. Like, you know what I mean? There's still a lot of love and light that we're all not do, but should be expected. So, you know what I mean? As a member, as a guy who competed against you, with you, seeing players in similar situations, you know what I mean? My hat goes off to you for being a consummate co- professional and a role model, really, uh, D. D. George, because everybody can't be five-star and blue chip and woo de woo woo yeah. You really learn through the process and it's something that kids – professionals who are transitioning and whatever or going through things to really look up forward to. So I just wanted to give you your flowers for that. You know what I mean? Cause that's always what I've looked up to you for. Um, and I know a lot of people, other players have too, because that's why everybody stack loves you. Once you see dev, you know, everybody, everybody, you can't FaceTime everybody. But, like, if somebody, like, you get a FaceTime and D. George is on it, like, you're going to be like, ah, oh, you'll walk out and you'll talk to D. George for a minute. That's the highest of compliments in our, in our league and, you know, for retired players. And, you know, that's what D. George has. So that's my long-winded Forgotten Seasons closings on my dog, Devin George. My man, man, appreciate y'all. Anytime uh-huh. you know how to get me. And let's get the boys yes, together. Sir. Let's do it. That's gonna happen in summer. That's gonna happen in summer. Let's do it. I'm gonna call you yeah. in a minute to talk about this. I just talked to Rod, so yeah, that's. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. I'm gonna send you a little clip too. From the, we got we got a championship game tonight, so we're gonna yeah, we gonna, we gonna go ahead and finish it up, and then we we yeah. uh, close, close this thing out. But let's get let's yeah. get them guys together. For sure.